Hey everyone, Steve here and in this video I'm taking a look at this 7-in-1 arcade fighting stick by Dobe Fomis Electronics. Now this is something I picked up off of Amazon for around 50 Australian dollars and it intrigued me because of the seemingly small form factor, the fact that it supports seven consoles out of the box apparently, and that I've also never heard of Dobe Fomis Electronics. If someone knows how I'm meant to be actually saying that company name, then let me know. The seven consoles that it supports in question are the P4 series, X1, XS, P3 series, X360, NS, Android, and PC. Now, apart from Android and PC, all of these seem to be generic and dodgy ways of saying these consoles. So we've got PS4 series, PS3 series, Nintendo Switch, Xbox 360, and the Xbox One series. So that's the Xbox One X and S. Now, all of that is a mouthful to say that it probably just has a few encoders and inbuilt drivers to be compatible with a few different systems. Now, as you might be able to tell, this is a relatively small box that I'm holding in my hands. And for reference, here is an Xbox One controller, and it is just bigger than this whole controller itself. But this is meant to be an arcade stick, so it'll be interesting to see what it actually looks like. I did pick this up brand new off of Amazon, so let's open it up. So I've just broken the two tape seals here, but actually let's take a look at the box before we open it up. In terms of what we can expect for the layout, you've got your joystick, eight action buttons on the front, what seems to be a cable compartment, and a self-contained USB cable. Apparently, Dobe Electronics guarantees quality since 1999. The product itself is 213 by 135 by 56 millimeters, and the box that I'm holding in my hands isn't that much bigger. On the side of the box here, we have analog stick installation steps. So basically what that tells us is that this comes with the joystick disassembled, and it looks like the ball top, the shaft, and the dust cover, all of the parts of the joystick basically, can be removed quite easily, which is pretty interesting. On this side of the box, again, 7-in-1 arcade fighting stick, nothing on the top side, and nothing on this left side here. All right, let's open it up. We've got another plastic packaging here, taking it out of the bag. We have the arcade stick itself, the manual, and then the USB cable. Okay, so right off the bat, I've taken the USB cable, but it turns out to actually be cables, plural, out of the bag. And I'm going to have a guess, I haven't read the manual yet, but I imagine that this is a controller pass-through cable. So that's kind of disappointing right off the bat. I'm basically assuming that this means that this arcade stick might not natively support the seven consoles. It says it does, and you have to actually add a genuine controller to authenticate it on those consoles. This is the stick itself. And yes, it is quite small. And wow, uh, actually, I'm not too sure. I don't know what kind of buttons these are. They do seem like micro switched buttons because they don't have a spongy, bottom out, but they definitely feel a bit weird and don't look like any arcade stick buttons that I have reviewed on the channel thus far. There are little films on the end, I guess just to protect the finish. Glossy finish on the left and right sides of the stick. Does that conduct fingerprints or attract fingerprints rather? I think you can kind of see fingerprints there, so better watch out for that. The body of the stick itself. Uh, let's take a closer look at the layout. So let's just go with PlayStation square, triangle, x, circle, r1, l1, r2, l2. So I think with a lot of games, we're gonna have to remap these, but that's fine to be expected. Home button, uh, I'm not sure what this button is. This might be turbo, cause it's got a rocket ship. L3 and R3, which is a nice touch. And your start slash option button. Up the top here, and there we have it. Basically confirmation that this natively will support the Switch and Android consoles, whatever you're using it on. But for PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, and Xbox One, we're going to need an uh, original controller to pass through and authenticate it. And of course, it will work natively on the PC. Okay, so this is the actual cable itself to connect to the consoles. It is jammed quite in there. Next to it actually is the ball top, which feels like a kind of really cheap plastic ball top. So let's just remove both of those. Kind of have to shake it out here. There we are. Just remove the joystick shaft with bolt up attached. You've got your dust cover and the little wrench to tighten the joystick shaft onto this kind of collar here. You can see inside here, this little kind of crevice and that is where this shaft will live when you're storing it. It was kind of hard to get out because of the cable jammed in there. And then there is a cutout here in the cable door to kind of thread it through like that. 
Okay, so fortunately, it looks like this bolt top can be removed. To be honest, this bolt top feels relatively low quality. Not that I'm expecting that much, but that's just an initial feeling. So after removing the bolt top, we are left with the shaft here. Now, the two ends of this thread kind of look similar. I wonder if they can actually be threaded onto either side. Okay, so I've just threaded on the bolt top to the bottom end of this shaft. So that clearly means that these are the same screw thread. To install the joystick shaft onto the actual stick assembly here, I imagine we just kind of thread it in like so. And that's actually where this wrench seems to come in handy to hold it still while you do that. Okay, so that seems simple enough. And you could probably already tell because I just realized it just now, but I made a crucial error and I forgot to put in the shaft cover. But luckily I should be able to just unscrew the ball top on this end so I don't have to... Ooh, that's a bit tight. I was gonna say I don't have to unscrew the whole joystick, but I might just have to because it is a bit tight here. All right, guess I'm gonna unscrew it. Okay, so I'm gonna thread the shaft cover on and then install the joystick. This is kind of weird because you actually have to hold the shaft cover up so you're able to get the wrench under it. Sorry, I keep saying shaft cover, I mean dust cover. Okay, so it's taken a bit of time and it was a bit fiddly, but I have finally assembled, quote unquote, this joystick. And we can see that this is a micro switched joystick. Hopefully you can pick up these clicks. There we are. So we probably do have micro switched parts all around. Luckily we do have this compartment actually. I've just closed it, but I'm gonna keep this wrench here. I don't think it actually lives anywhere specifically. So it's just gonna rattle around, which is not ideal. And here we have it, the small Dobe Electronic Arcade Stick. So let's take a quick look at this included kind of manual pamphlet. Apparently this product number is TP4-1886. Uh, a lot of this English doesn't really make perfect sense. So feel free to pause it and kind of have a read of it for yourself. I'm not gonna read it out verbatim. They're using way too many words, I think, to describe what it does. And they call it the TP4-1886. So I guess that's what we can refer to this as if we wanted to. So interestingly enough, when detailing how to work on a PS4, just giving this a quick read, it turns out that you can actually change it so uh, this joystick here on the arcade stick acts as not just the left analog stick, but also the right analog stick and the D-pad. Spelling mistakes throughout, it, it says D-pad here. If you press the R3 and home button on this arcade stick simultaneously, which are these two buttons here, then you can actually press the touchpad button on the PS4, which is pretty interesting. We have some basic instructions on how the keys are mapped and how to switch to different modes as well and how to use the turbo mode. Again, another spelling mistake where the joystick is known as the job stick. <laughs> and then these matters needing attention, which is basically the warnings and hazards or whatever. So not much illuminated by this manual here. I don't really plan on testing this thing out on every one of its um, approved consoles because it just seems like a bit of a pain, especially given that you need the original controllers to authenticate it. So I am just gonna test this out on the Nintendo Switch. Okay, so I've brought out just my Nintendo Switch tablet here. I'm going to plug in the arcade stick and to make sure we get this right, once I plug it in, I have to press the share button and L3 at the same time for two seconds. So if I plug this in and nothing happens, then we know that's what we need to do. Oh, okay. Didn't need to do anything actually. So that's good news. What is this? <laughs> I've never seen this menu in my life. Okay, so it seems responsive so far. Um, let's just do a quick button check. By default, this is an analog stick, so we're not getting any D-pad here. X, Y, A, B, Z, R, Z, L. Click in right stick, click in left stick, plus here, minus there. This is gonna be home button and this is turbo. Let's try setting the turbo, clearing the turbo. Um, how do I change it to D-pad? I really want this arcade stick to be D-pad. If I press L3 and home, L3 and home, did that do anything? Ah, wait, if this connection light here flickers once, it's in the D-pad mode. If it flickers twice, it's left uh, analog stick. If it flickers three times, it's right analog stick. So let's see what happens when I press it. That's three, so that means it's right analog stick. That's once, so it's D-pad. So if I go back to the button check, okay, so I do have the D-pad now, which is good news. And I think I'll just try out some Blaze Blue Central Fiction on the Switch. Okay, so I'm here with Blaze Blue on the Switch. Ooh. Feels a little slow, but I guess that's just me. Um, 
You can see here the joystick is quite loose without me even, um, hmm, wait a sec. Aha. Uh -huh. I thought the culprit might be the fact that this might not have been like screwed down tightly. It kind of isn't. Let me just fix that with the spanner or the wrench. But that's probably kind of symptomatic of the problem in general with the stick having a removable shaft. It's gonna turn down the switch. It was pretty loud. I felt like I was shouting. Okay, so I'm tightening this stick down extra tight. Hopefully it doesn't loosen itself up. So there we are. The stick is a little loose still, but at least it's not just flopping about all over the place. All right. Quarter circles seem to be going all right. Is it DP motion? Sure you can. Whoops, wrong one. Buttons and movement seems to be all fine. Again, these aren't good parts by any means, but they seem to be doing the job in a nice small form factor as well. I am kind of button mashing. I'm a very casual blaze blue guy, meaning I just mess around with like arcade mode and like the weird scenarios. Overall, this stick feels all right. You know, it's, it's kind of a fun novelty. Um, definitely good for traveling, I suppose. It does the job. The fact that you do need to authenticate with another controller kind of defeats the purpose on the systems that it requires you to do that on. On Switch, it works natively, so that's good enough. But yes, it's hard to recommend, it seems. These buttons do feel a little mushy relative to nice high quality arcade parts, but they don't feel unusable. And especially with such a small form factor, you're kind of making a lot of compromises anyways in terms of functionality and comfort in some parts. Okay, so I've just done a bit of playing around just to see if I can make this stick loose again through normal usage. And it doesn't look like it, so I'm testing out to see, sorry for the infinite scrolling on the switch there, but I'm just testing out to see if this has become loose, the uh, twistable shaft. And uh, I think it has. This basically untightened itself because I really tightened it down before, but through you normal usage, it kind of has become loose and I can just kind of unscrew it pretty easily. So that's something you have to be aware of probably. This is going to unscrew itself with continuous vigorous use, which is not ideal at all, clearly. But anyways, that being said, I think that's it for the play testing. Uh, let's just have a quick look inside the stick itself and see what we get. Ooh, just for reference, I saw this was getting a bit messed up and I was like, is there some sort of plastic film? And there is, so let's peel that off. Let's unplug it from the switch first, or turn the switch off even. It does have a plastic film to kind of protect this artwork, quote unquote. It's just a weird kind of PCB trace design. And seeing as I've removed the joystick itself, I don't really need to protect this in any way using my dumbbell method. So let's just unscrew it like this. Again, this is my trusty Phillips double zero, or is this a Phillips one? This is a Phillips one screwdriver. You've got rubber feet on the bottom. It looks like a total of six screws. Nothing interesting going on on the sides of the arcade stick at all, really. Actually, let's check this out uh, in a nice font. Prints out seven in one arcade fighting stick, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so that's the last of the six screws removed. Let's just open it up and see what we get. Oh, <laughs> that's interesting. Okay, so inside we just have a joystick assembly. It looks like that can be replaced with um, other non-removable joysticks, like kind of, I guess this is a JLF style plate. Uh, here we have the button uh, PCB. The buttons are soldered in and you can kind of see here that they are, I guess, keyboard switch or micro switch style buttons. Um, definitely either like 24 or even smaller uh, millimeter in size. Got a JSD connector there, which is probably with that many wires, I think, how many is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There aren't nine buttons. I don't know what this connector does. Here is the, uh, the connector from the joystick to the main button PCB. So that seems to be the one piece. Here is the USB cable that can come out like that. Uh, I might as well just unscrew this um, PCB and see what we get. Two very short screws here. Is this all that's keeping this PCB in? Is there another hidden screw? Oh, <laughs> what's keeping the PCB in is the fact that these buttons are soldered in. So we won't be able to actually see the underside of that unless we desolder these buttons. So I don't really know why they um, screwed them in, if that's the case. So that's not really gonna do much for us. Uh, joystick looks like it was epoxied in, the connector of it was. So you really can't mod this without basically committing 
to the full mod here. I could possibly replace the joystick shaft with one from my collection because you've just got your normal like E or C clip here. So if you can remove the entire shaft and maybe just disassemble this in place with the uh, restrictor gate, you can see that it is a circular restrictor gate, this yellow bit here. It isn't a square, it isn't an octagon, it's a circle. Um, that might be the only mod I will attempt at the moment. Let's try that. Replacing this, which kind of defeats the purpose, but replacing this detachable or removable joystick shaft with one that is normal and not removable. So let's give that a go. Okay, so I've got two joysticks from my collection here. Uh, this is from the Mad Cat's Fight Stick Alpha, I think. And, you know, this might actually work as a drop-in replacement because I think it's got the same mounting plate, uh, kind of. The distances might be a bit off, but it looks like the same mounting plate and it's got the same connector style. But unfortunately, like I said, um, the connector here seems to have been epoxied in. But that might be removable if I give it a little lift. But actually, you know what? I'm not really going to bother at the moment. I think these are the exact same parts, to be honest. You can see the switches there from the Mad Cat's Fight Stick Alpha, say NO3 something something, says that here as well. I do like the fact that this is a square gate and this is a circular gate, which I'm not a fan of. So I may try and replace the restricted gate and the shaft from this stick into here. Given I'm not going to do anything with this PCB anyways, I'm just going to put these two small screws back in just so I don't lose them. All right, so seeing as I have to remove the restrictor gate from this anyways, I'm just going to practice on this joystick. Oh, that's pretty easy. Just push in the clip and then pull out. Pops off like that. Work on it one by one. So remove the restrictor gate from the Mad Cat's Fight Stick Alpha joystick. So these are Zing Ear switches, it seems. <laughs> and I imagine we're going to find the same name here. Uh, this one is a bit of a pain to remove, not working so far. I think normal advice is to use a screwdriver. Don't want to scratch it more than I have to. Why is this so hard to remove? Okay, so I'm having such a hard time trying to get this uh, restrictor gate to come off, which, you know, if I was less stubborn about it, I would probably just leave it and say that I didn't have to do that mod. But anyways, I managed to uh, unscrew the actual mounting plate from the joystick itself. And just having a look here, I definitely think I'd be able to fit this, maybe. You can kind of see this is the Mad Cat stick mounting plate. I think I'd be able to fit it across its two dimensions. But I would just have to unplug this cable here. And like I said, I think it might have been epoxied on. But you should be able to just wiggle that out. Ah, awesome. Okay, so I can get rid of this whole uh, detachable stick assembly, it seems. Which means I do actually have to put the, um, I guess the PCB and the restrictor gate on. Doesn't go that way clearly. It goes this way. And then the restrictor gate for the Mad Cat stick goes back on like this. I actually have to remove this uh, cable. And if I plug this into here, this basically just would have meant I swapped out the arcade stick. And then of course I now have to remove this bolt up. Okay, so I remove the bolt up so I can thread it through the hole in the case here. If you remember from my Mad Cat's Fight Stick Alpha video, for some reason there are two dust covers here, but I'm not going to need both of those. Although we can try it. Let's just leave the one that goes under the stick on, or it will fall off regardless of what you try to do. Okay. So we can see here the Fight Stick Alpha mounting plate should fit. Great. Just lose a screw inside of it and make your life a pain in the ass. I'm probably going to leave that dust cover that I don't need. Okay, so I've now swapped out the Dobe stick with the Mad Cat's Fight Stick Alpha joystick with a square gate and everything. Before I close up the actual case, we've got to give it a test drive, otherwise it might have all been for nothing. So I'm going to attach the ball top again. I haven't tightened the ball top down, but I will once I confirm that this works. Reconnecting the USB plug. Still in blaze blue. Haha! <laughs> awesome. The joystick swap worked, went off without a hitch. I didn't think to feel whether or not the restrictor gate was square. I kind of just assumed they're square until I see otherwise because I'm not really discerning about that kind of thing. But now with a square gate, I can definitely feel, you know, the difference. And although this kind of removes one of the big functionalities of this stick being portable because of the uh, detachable joystick shaft, 
it now won't unscrew itself, which is a plus in and of itself. So awesome. We got a little bonus mod in this video. So now just to finish off tightening the ball top back onto the new shaft. And there we have it. A nice clashing ball top now, red and blue. Doesn't look great. And then just to put the base plate back on. Now I would kind of benefit from using my dumbbell method to keep the ball top protected, but you know, it doesn't really matter overall. It's such a light stick that I can just hold it up in the air or I can just rest it on its side here and it won't fall down. Okay, so just tightening all these screws up now. And then here we have it, a joystick modded Dobe 7-in-1 stick. In the future, I definitely would want to desolder these buttons and kind of see what we can replace them with. But for the moment, fixing that issue with the joystick that will eventually unscrew itself all the time, it seems like a win for me. So there we are. This can go in the collection for a small travel stick. And as always, I now have a spare, or at least I've swapped out one of my spare sticks for the one that came with a dope stick. So I'm gonna have to keep this all together. Luckily, there aren't any really loose parts. I just have to make sure that this detachable shaft doesn't detach itself in storage, which is gonna be a challenge in and of itself. There we are. There's two um, dust covers here just because this is the extra one from the Mad Cat stick that doesn't really need to be there. And this wasn't the stick that we started the video off with, but I guess it kind of shows you some quick mod potential if you don't like the detachable shaft here. If you can deal with these clearly not arcade quality buttons, then this is definitely a nice compact and portable option for you. Wiring harness with the stick as well. And then I guess now I have a spare little wrench here for my tool collection. Anyways guys, that'll do it for this quick unboxing, testing and teardown of this Dobe Electronic 7-in-1 arcade stick. I only tested it out on the Switch and not these six other platforms, but given that you need a mix of controllers to authenticate for those platforms, I'd say only get this if you like the functionality and the form factor. Uh, there are probably other sticks out there that you can use dedicated for those platforms. The fact that it came with a detachable shaft that you just screw in is a nice idea, but unfortunately I found that it would unscrew itself way too much during a normal play session. So basically it forced us to do a joystick swap. So I've taken the joystick out of a Mad Cat's Fight Stick Alpha, put it in here and luckily they share the same kind of mounting system and wiring. So it was basically a drop-in replacement. Anyways, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll answer as much as I can. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could like it. And if you're not already, please consider subscribing to my channel and checking out my other videos as there's a lot to see. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.